Delivery robotics company Serve recently went public at the NASDAQ in a reverse merger, and the company raised $40 million in the debut. Well, joining me now with more is the company's co-founder and CEO, Dr. Ali Kashani. Uh, doctor, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for having me. Uh, your company raising about $40 million in this offering. How are you going to use that to expand the business? We're going to scale robots. We have a contract with Uber to launch 2,000 robots on their platform. And we just actually brought Magna uh, on board to become our contract manufacturer. So they're going to build the robots for us. We plan to have all the 2,000 robots deployed next year. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to scale? Where are you going to scale? People might already see these on the road in some places in Los Angeles, but I'm sure you have larger ambitions than that. Yeah, we've been operating on Uber Eats for a couple of years. So if you go to LA, open Uber Eats, you can order from hundreds of different restaurants today, and the robots will bring them to you. We've been growing 25% months over months for two years in a row. So now we're going to be able to build more robots. We're going to expand LA, but we are also thinking about some new markets like San Diego, Dallas, possibly Vancouver, Canada. We, are, we, are, we have a short list to work from. What's the business case for this? Why would someone use a robotic delivery option versus a human? Well, look, there, there hasn't been any automation or efficiency introduced in last mile for, for a very long time. You order something from China right now, it costs $2 to get that to you. You order it from Chinatown, it costs $10 to get that to you. So it's the whole thing is upside down. Uh, the case here really is we can bring efficiency. You don't need to move two pound burritos in two ton cars. With these robots, you can do it cheaper, you can do it safer, you can reduce emissions, mm -hmm. and it actually is a boom to businesses, uh, local businesses in the area. How autonomous are these vehicles? The level four autonomy, which means they don't require humans in the loop for safety. They're actually safe by themselves. They can operate uh, independently, but when they need help, someone can actually help them remotely. Interesting. Uh, now, in terms of growing the business, I saw your company made about $200,000 plus in revenue last year, uh, but now you have $40 million in the bank. And so what are those financial projections in terms of how you'll be able to grow? So the 2,000 robots that we have on the contract are expected to generate 60 to $80 million in annual revenue. So this would all be, be deployed next year, and that's the rate we are hoping to achieve by the end of next year. Are there regulations that make this challenging? Do you have to meet with local uh, governments to make sure that these robots can be on the sidewalks and the roads? You know, there are a lot of positive momentum around uh, the regulatory side of sidewalk delivery because, uh, first of all, by nature, they're much safer. Every time you're taking a car trip out of the road and using a robot instead, we are making cities safer for pedestrians and, and everybody else. The, by default, these robots are allowed to operate anywhere in the country. But 20-something states have actually put regulations in favor of robots to encourage us to go there. We like to partner with cities. We let them know in advance before we go somewhere. We've uh, been successful, 100% batting rate, basically. For every city we've ever wanted to do a pilot in or launch, we've been able to do so. Uh, you have some major backers, actually, as well. Uber and NVIDIA, you referenced right. Uber earlier. Uh, both of these companies with a double-digit stake when you debuted. I think they still both do have a double-digit stake. That's right. How is this deal beneficial to them? Well, we've been working with NVIDIA for six years on this vision that they've had for a while, which is robotics is right around the corner. You're going to see these deployments at scale soon. Uh, so it's been six years of partnership with them. They invested in us as soon as we spun out of Postmates. Uber is uh, also a major investor and a major partner for us, and uh, they've been supporting us at every step of the way. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the business model, what is it? So delivery as a service. So we have a fleet that anybody can use. Uh, obviously, Uber is our first anchor customer. We are able to launch the 2,000 robots for them. But the same robots can actually work for anybody else. Like we have a partnership with 7-Eleven. In LA right now, you can use the 7-Eleven app to order, and our robots can bring you your items. Or we've done pilots with Pizza Hut, with Walmart. Uh, so you would be able to uh, order other uh, through other apps and, and, and services and get your items in the same robots that we are deploying uh, for Uber. What about advertisements? How big? of an opportunity could that be for the business? Well, I never thought I would start a robotic company and get in the ad business, but it turned out to be a really great way to supplement our revenue for the robots. Just look, imagine out of home advertising that you see on buses and billboards, except that nobody takes selfies with a bus, but they take selfies with robots, so they're very popular. Uh, we've been getting so much inbound interest in advertising on robots that the robots are usually booked months in advance. Okay, so in terms of how you protect these robots and make sure when they're out driving themselves autonomously on the sidewalk, how can you ensure that they return safely? 
Well, first of all, the cargo is secure. Only the person who ordered the food, they can use the app and unlock it and grab their item. In six years of operating in LA, we've had one incident when someone actually tried to steal a robot and they were arrested within half an hour. The robot actually came home by itself, uh, it came home safely, but the individual was arrested. So it's a really bad idea to steal robots. Do consumers have the ability to opt in or opt out of the robot delivery? It's an opt out. So by default, everybody's in, uh, merchants and, and customers. But if they don't like it, which is not very often, they would, they would be able to opt out. How do you open the robot? You press a button on the app. On, on the Uber Eats app. On the app That's within right. it, and you open the robot. Pretty impressive. So what cities after LA? We are thinking about Dallas, we are thinking about San Diego, uh, perhaps Vancouver, Canada. So that, that's in the short list right now. And I'm sure that probably those uh, areas are obviously friendly to your business, but have you been able to gauge any sort of market demand there in terms of from the consumer if they would be interested in something like this? Absolutely. We've done pilots in a few places, including Vancouver. And uh, Uber, obviously, being our anchor partner, they have uh, tons of demand in all those cities. Do you feel like it's hard for Americans to adopt this idea of robots? You know, we talk a lot about robotics, artificial intelligence. Obviously, your company plays in both spaces. And I think many businesses uh, see a big business case there. Uh, but sometimes consumers want to know, is this really beneficial to me? What would you tell them? Yeah, look, um, we've been over-reliant on cars. And that's a problem we need to solve. So the idea of moving a two-pound burrito in a two-ton car, it doesn't make any sense at all. So by removing these cars, we are going to make cities more efficient. We are making them more friendly for the pedestrians, for everybody else on the street. And we are going to provide a really important service for businesses who want to bring that cost of delivery down. Uh, we talked a bit about sales growth. Uh, what about profitability? What's the path to profitability? We believe we have a path to profitability with our 2,000 deployments. And when would you hit that? Uh, by the end of next year. By the end of next That's year, right. any sort of metric that you're expecting in terms of profits? Uh, we are expecting more than 50% in contribution margins from every delivery. Okay, uh, we will be watching that closely. Anything else you want to share with us? Uh, we're happy to have you, by the way, down here at the Stock Thank you. Go, go to LA and check out the robots. It's really fun. And hopefully, we'll be in a city near you soon. Uber Eats. What about partnerships with DoorDash? Obviously, I mean, the main reason we spun out of Uber and Postmates was to be able to work with everybody else. So right. we are talking to folks, and hopefully, we'll have more news to share soon. Why would someone want a robot delivery over a drone? Well, drones don't really work well in environments where we are. We are usually in city environments where, the, uh, you know, most, most deliveries, more than half deliveries, even in all of the United States, are less than two, two and a half miles. Those are located in populated areas. You don't want a noise of the drone. It's, it's very difficult to operate in places with, uh, you know, high rises or, or mid rises. So that, that's a place that's really good for robots. And if you're going out, outside the city in suburban or, uh, you know, rural areas, you will use drones. Hi, Dr. Ali Koshani, uh, co-founder, CEO of Cerobotics, recently debuted a few weeks ago on the NASDAQ. Uh, doctor, we appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much.